Pretty amazing stuff, eh, Amanda? Uh oh, your sound's off. He's got it on mute. There we are. There you are. I muted during the segment because I wasn't sure if anyone could hear me backstage and I did not want to interrupt. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know the answer to that question. But anyway, what I said, that's pretty amazing stories. It, 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 they are amazing stories. So, Praise the Lord. It was really, really good what he's doing. Uh, and I know you've been a supporter of us in the wells as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you for, for your part in those stories. So, uh, Amanda, we got a lot to do. So I'm going to just <laughs> turn you over into you share whatever you want in which order. I know we have animals. We got conferences. You got the word. So, OK, so I'll pray first and when we'll yeah. share the animals quick, because okay. Mr. Steve loves the animals and everybody I do. else. Does I too. sure do. And then we'll get into everything else. So by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth and power of almighty God with authority now come forth in Jesus name. Father, allow us the humble privilege of being vessels of your power. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. What are we going to do first? The animals, did you say? Well, we, we could do the animals first. Um, next time you go to Uganda, I expect you to bring me back a present <laughs> for the sanctuary. <laughs> so Some the, type of animal. We have, we have to sneak it on the air. <laughs> <laughs> so here's oh. Bunny Rabbit. Is this a he and she, or what do we have here? These are two females. These are Faith and Hope. Faith is the one with her legs out. She actually is is disabled. Wow. In her back legs. Um, they they came from a situation, they were very sick. And we have, praise God, we have an amazing vet who cares for them. Uh, and so we have spent quite a bit trying to get them well. And they are making improvements in leaps and bounds. When they came, I named them Faith and Hope because nice. I said to our team, that is what we need. That is good. Now, I had asked you off the air and I said, can I ask you that on the air? Yes. And you said yes. And what I asked you is, how do you know when it's the time to mercifully uh, send yes. them to heaven and, and, and end their stay here or not? What what Talk about that for a few minutes. So I use that as a last resort okay. always. So uh, because sometimes we have to give the Lord the, the room to work. Yeah. So I use that as a last, last resort when everything else has been exhausted and there's, and the, the Lord is giving me the release to do so. And sometimes he doesn't give me the release. And this is why we have to really be in the word every day and be sensitive to what the Lord is trying to tell us. And I'll give you a very quick example. Chester, who many of you know, our cat at the sanctuary, who's diabetic, he fights diabetes. That's why he was surrendered to us was very ill when we when we took him in. And Chester ended up at a very large animal hospital we have here that has an ICU unit. They have really? therapy units. Oh, it's incredible. Uh, and so he ends up there very ill on the first night of Passover. This really? is this is what what is it a year ago? No, it was I think it was two years ago maybe. But he ends up there very ill and they want to put him down. And I said to them, because the Lord stopped me, and I said, you might be an expert in your field, but I am in mine. And putting an animal down on the first night of Passover at Ooh. sundown is a terrible idea. And I said this to the doctor, you know what to say to me. I said, <laughs> you are going to treat this cat because he is going to make a miraculous recovery. Wow. So they treated him. You know what happened? Two day turnaround. They didn't know what to say. They were they were they were shocked, and they couldn't even explain what happened. And <laughs> so Chester made a miraculous turnaround because it wasn't his time, and the Lord prompted me to say no. It's not time. Praise God. So, and, wow, I love that. You know, we 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 think of animals and humans in different terms like it's more important to take yeah. care of a human and mm -hmm. somehow less important and and we, we pretty quickly put our animals down we have had to put on you know we have you know animals some dogs will last seven eight years and then that's their time some last much longer we're we're learning we're on our second golden uh not golden retriever yellow lab god's given us you know, and I don't know if you've heard Kat Kerr talked about there's going to be a boom in, in pets 
Have you heard her say that? Well, uh, well, we better expand the arc then. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. She said there's going to be a baby boom and there's going to be a pet boom. And she said there's going to be a profit boom. God's going to release so many profits more than, than there are. Those three things. It's, that's really encouraging to hear that. So, Wow. So, well, I, let's let I me just get ready. Yeah, let's go ahead and send you uh, uh, back into all this stuff. There's so much good stuff to cover. So, here we go. there is good stuff to cover. If we have time at the end, if you want, we'll show the video of Mordecai. Oh, that'd be good too. We'll save it for the end. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what we are getting into now, did you want me to quickly just bring up the eclipse and just sure, go for it? Yeah. Wrap this up in a bow for everybody. Yeah. Okay. So we are in a 39-day window where we have Purim that happened, right? Book of yep. Esther, pa uh, Eclipse, April 8th, and Passover. It's a 39-day window. Now, having to do with this eclipse on April 8th, the last one happened in 2017. This one is coming seven years later in election year, 2024. And the last one passed over seven cities named Salem. This one is passing over more than eight cities named Nineveh across North America. Wow. Now, what's interesting about this is that one of the Ninevehs is in Texas, near the path of totality. And there's also a Jonah, Texas. Eagle Pass is in that path of totality. Oh, really? For Which the is where all of the, this where the breach of the border yes. is Eagle Pass. Has okay. erupted. The interesting part about Nineveh in the book of Jonah is that right before Jonah ended up at Nineveh, after he was swallowed by a great fish because he didn't want to go to Nineveh, and he gets spit back out on shore, and now he goes and he pronounces judgment right before this happens. There was a full solar eclipse. Really? That was viewable from Nineveh. And they took it as a sign of a bad omen that someone was upset with them. And then Jonah shows up and really? pronounces judgment. And this is why they turned as fast as they did uh, and repented for that time. Now, the a few other, a couple of other things about this eclipse is that it is six years six weeks, wait, it's six years, six months, six weeks, and six days from the last one, uh, which is which is interesting. Very interesting. And the eclipse falls smack in the middle between Purim and Passover. It literally falls right in the middle of these two events. Now, you've got some crazy people trying to do things during this eclipse because they understand the spiritual implications. You've got CERN restarting their Hadron Collider. Okay, they're their large hadron collider that they have that they're trying to find out the invisible force that runs the universe. His name is Almighty God. I mean, we can solve this for you very fast, CERN, but this is what they're doing. They're doing it on the eclipse. If you happen to look at CERN's logo, there is at least four sixes in that really? logo. Mm -hmm. If you happen to take it and their logo actually kind of looks like an eclipse. You have one circle kind of moving over the other. It's very interesting. You have NASA firing three rockets during the eclipse from Virginia named APEP. And this is during, this is like a four minute eclipse, right? They're going to all go off. Yeah. One, these, one after the other in the path of totality. So it's going to be going on for hours, but each, you know, each area is probably going to see it maybe 13 minutes or less. I see. Okay. And so Apep was, I call him the false Egyptian god of darkness and disorder and was an enormous serpent and was the enemy of Ra, who they considered their sun and god. This is what they're naming the rocket? This is what they've named the rockets, Apep. Okay, and they're firing at the day of the eclipse, the same day CERN is firing up the Hadron Collider, the same time, okay, because the White House just made the proclamation on Easter Resurrection Sunday. Of How does that tie to the other two? Well, Nineveh was the hub for the temple Ishtar, was the main hub of worship for Ishtar. Ishtar, one of the requirements of the worship of Ishtar was for men to dress up as women 
Really? And for Ishtar to turn men into women. In fact, there's a curse that is written in a province of Turkey, basically saying, may she turn a man into a woman. And so it's no accident they have made this proclamation eight days before this eclipse with all of these other things going on. So I've kind of tried to wrap it up all for you in a nutshell here. And uh, what, did, what is your view if, uh, of God's looking down on this and what does he have to say about that in the eclipse? I mean, we know he doesn't, he's not blessing those works. Uh, as uh, a one pro prophet said, God gave the signs in the heavens because the heavens declare the glory of God. So what, what are your thoughts on that? I think what's happening is because, yes, there are signs in the heavenlies and the, and the Bible talks about it. The sun will be turned to darkness. The moon will be turned to blood. You add darkness full over the land when Jesus was on the cross. I mean, there, 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 are, there are speakings of this biblically. And so signs in the heavens, we as believers have to take notice of, right? Yeah. And the way we look at it, I would say, is the way Jesus spoke about this. Remember when the voice came from the heavens and some heard it as thunder and yeah. some actually heard it as the voice of God. Right. Some people are going to see this as thunder. And some people are going to realize that that the Lord is speaking and on top of it, that the kingdom of darkness is trying, trying to utilize this for their own gain. And it's if I'm hearing that right about Nineveh, because Nineveh repented, what is it? Nineveh? Um, and turn to the Lord and humble themselves before God. This is the announcement to us and as that, the Ecclesia. For 39 days, that ends on, is that April 22 when Passover is? Is that what you're? It, well, April 22 is the beginning of Passover. April 30th okay. is the end. So basically, if you, if you take the beginning of Purim and you go to the end of Passover, you get a base, basically a 39-day window. That's right. Passover is not one day. Yes. It's like seven days, right? Mm -hmm. And Passover had to do with what? Egypt. What are they tying a lot of this to? NASA and CERN and others? Egypt. Egyptian gods. You see, the enemy is trying to literally get ahead of this. Yeah. Yeah. Both sides, good and evil, are trying to take opportunity with God being the victor and all that. But yeah. Amen. Interesting stuff. All right. Very interesting. All right. Okay. Okay. So the word... Word of the Lord. This is brand new. This came March 30th. Okay. So this is a very recent word. Uh, and so it's a little longer and many times around the time of, of Passover, or Rosh Hashanah or other times, I tend to get these words that are a little bit longer uh, than normal. Okay. So there's a lot to get into. We'll get into it. All praise, all is capitalized. Honor and glory be to the Lord of hosts, the King of glory, the one who sits on the highest throne of righteousness and grace, the Alpha and Omega, who sees all things and knows all things. Elohim is his name. Shaddai is his name. King of kings is his name. To be proclaimed throughout the nations. And to his kingdom, there is no end. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, Keep the Passover, my children. Remember what I have done for my firstborn, as I, the Lord, demonstrated my power to those who proclaim to be a superpower. And I delivered my capital children. He uses the word serpent quite a bit in this. From the serpent whom Egypt worshipped. The crown of the serpent was broken, says the Lord. Remember, Pharaoh used to wear a serpent on his head. And so he says the crown of the serpent was broken. Pharaoh used to, I'm just reminding everyone, Pharaoh used to wear a serpent on his head. And says the Lord of hosts, the time of the second Passover, watch around that time. Okay, so I'm going to explain this for a minute so people understand. This is May 21st, 2024. There is a rule, I believe it's in Leviticus, that if those were defiled and considered unclean and could not partake of the first Passover, a month after Passover, they allowed a second Passover. This is every single year? Every single all, year. 
Yes, every single year they could partake of it. Now, I wasn't even sure when this was. I did, the Lord just said the second Passover, and I had to kind of have to go, you know, look it up. So, but this is May 21st this year is the time of the second Passover. So the time of the second Passover, watch around that time, says the Lord. Watch both Israel and the United States for a relieving of some pressure that is built in the atmosphere of your nations. And the blood that has now seeped into the soil and covered those areas with outcries, says the Lord. Okay, so that's the end well, of the first part. And by the way, it's really interesting, the wording, that because God is very specific with you in wording. Because you, people are always looking for the date. What date? And yet this one says, the time of the Passover, watch around that time. God didn't say, watch on May 21st. No. He said, watch around that, that time. That time, exactly. And you know why he does that? Because he's God and we're not. And mm -hmm. so he knows the exact times. Yeah. And he will give us, you know what I mean? Yeah. Kind of target dates to kind of watch around. Yeah. To, to yeah. see what, you know, will transpire from there. Good. And says the Lord of hosts, the Ahabs, the Jeroboams, the Ahaziahs, who have wickedly ruled, who have sold their own people, who have sold them desperate to place that money into the king's treasury. That bill of sale shall be nullified, says the Lord. However, says the Lord, now this is going to be all capitals, my people and my church must bear the standard in this hour for that sale to be nullified. For and chains as the desperation has mounted in your nation in Israel. Now, now that's you, interesting. Can you explain the, what does it mean again? The sale, S A L E. What is what? Yeah. I think I, I oh sale like when something is purchased. There's yeah. there's a sale. Do we know what that's referring to, or is that a, just a clue? I think it's a clue. Um, let's see. Must bear the standard in this hour for that sale to be nullified. Okay, so what they're really, I think what's happening here is they're trying to literally sell the United States and its freedom away. Oh, okay. okay? Just sell it. Like, and if, if we want to have a picture of this for people to, to get a mental image, if we go to the book of Hosea, Hosea's wife, Gomer, if you remember, was an unfaithful woman. Yeah. And she left him and she and she went, and she went and she she got in a relationship with somebody else. Well, by the time she worked through all that, she in chains. And here comes Hosea, like almighty God, to purchase her back and redeem her. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, good imagery. Yeah. Okay. The UN, says the Lord, is desperate to place nations upon the judgment block. A judgment block surrounded by corrupt nations that are doing darker deeds than the one they accuse, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, you accuse my capital children, my firstborn, without coming to me, that's capitalized, the king of kings, the righteous judge, and petitioning me as the righteous judge to judge such nations and covenants, all capitals. No, says the Lord, you have given that over to nations ruled by ruthless darkness and demons of desire. For power through blood, you have given the judgments, O UN, over to corrupt nations to judge when they are committing atrocities that you, O UN, have thrown a cover of diffusion over to lead the eyes of the nations of such because they have been padding your treasury, says the Lord. The black market, O UN, has been padding your treasury and filling your war chest. And I, the Lord, shall break open that war chest and expose the nations who have been buying their way out of being judged by the table of nations, says the Lord. And does it, does, am I understanding that they're saying the UN and those associated with it are judging the firstborn or judging Israel of certain crimes when they themselves are guilty of worse crimes yes. yet? It's uh, not saying that Israel's clean in every way no it's not at all it's not saying that but he's saying a you're not this is my covenant nation you're not coming to me to judge the covenants yeah of these nations so that's number one and number two he's saying 
what you're doing is far worse and you yeah. want to put them on the judgment block yeah. but you're committing far worse atrocities that you're buying your way out of uh, okay so that's basically in a nutshell what yeah. he's saying that's pretty clear you know yeah. that's not even that much in a clue form it's no kind of that right that's very clear. clear yeah <laughs> that's good okay let me see here. And I shall judge your heads in this time. He's still talking to the UN. The heads of the UN shall be judged. The heads of Geneva shall be judged in an area where they deviously desire to open portals and make deals with devils. I shall judge them, says the Lord. For the clock of grace has thinned for some says the Lord, and their matters are being placed before my capital throne, and I, the Lord, shall judge such men. Okay, that's pretty clear too. Thus says the Lord, those who have given to, th all of these things are happening within this window. Intense. This is not a time to not be right with the Lord, because he, he does seem to be acting uh, very... It, it's not as if God isn't always intentional. It's just like he's got more of a, I, I'm going to put it in my human language. It's okay. as if he has a busier schedule because he's making, you said above in several places, I will judge, I will judge, I will judge. It's like a judgment time, which just means I'll decide this, I'll decide that. And if I decide against you, you're in trouble. If I decide for you, you're, you know, that's a, that's a judgment too. He can judge the righteous, and because there's a place in Daniel that says judgment was rendered in favor of the saints. Yes. So judgment doesn't always mean destruction. No, it doesn't always mean destruction. And I remember December 2023, the Lord said to me, the joy of the Lord, the justice of Yahweh has entered into the earth. And I could feel my hair almost stand up on end. <laughs> on my body when he said that because you know what that means then the matters of men have been weighed and now the lord's answers and justice and righteous judgments are entering the earth and you're yeah. going to see now those natural judgments play out yeah 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 the time to be right with the lord again i'll it say is. that you know because in that season of judgment you don't want to be on the wrong side of anything no, you don't know. This is the time to get right with the Lord. It is. It yeah. truly, truly is. Come yeah. to him. He's a loving God. He's long suffering, but also he is the righteous judge. He never, he never took that off. He never stepped it down from that. Yeah. It's like, uh, seek the Lord while he may be found. I'm not sure which scripture that is, but it's in there. I don't know if that's Psalms or what, but you know, seek him while he may be found. Amen. Because there's a time at which it's too late. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Amen. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, the Red Sea, says the Lord, red warning in capitals, says the Lord. Many are looking to enter those waters, says the Lord, and set up ports. Watch, says the Lord, as the spirits of persecution of apartheid, the spirit that seeks to vilify what I, the Lord, have created. Those spirits have gone out like an army into the earth in this hour. You shall overcome, says the Lord, by the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Is that is this only symbolism or is it also talking about the Red Sea? What What's your take on I that? think this has a dual meaning because he says Red Sea, then he says Red Warning. Okay. Okay, so I think yes, the Red Sea is is an area right now that that it, it there's going to become more of a contention over that part over that yeah. area, but when he says red warning, that could be countries that are considered red countries that have red flags. You know, that, I suppose it could be uh, Rhino country, which is red in name mm -hmm. only, or Rhino in. Or Republican name only that you you don't Could want to be, be a too. Republican faking out and saying we're the red party, and yet you're really doing blue things. Yes, exactly. You know, so the Lord is saying red warning here. So you know to 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 you know be mindful of that. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. South Africa says the Lord is about to be overturned. Mm.
by capital children in a time of unrest in the world. This ancient ruler seeks an occasion, says the Lord, to bubble up and over in South Africa again, says the Lord. Mm. They shall be dealt with in this hour, says the Lord. So he's saying that they're looking for an occasion. This ancient ruler is looking for an occasion to bubble up out of South Africa again, like apartheid did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Then he just says, watch Chile in this hour. So Chile, so, so I don't know what's going to happen in Chile, but normally when the Lord says this, it's of a national matter. It's of an urgent national matter. Okay. What happens? So I would watch the country of Chile. Yes, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm looking at it again. I'm going, wait a minute. This is, we numbed it, named it number seven. All it says is watch Chile. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's the whole it. word. Okay. Yeah, that's it. That's all he says. Okay. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, for me, the Lord, your God, to pass over, capitals, two words, to pass over in your nation, to destroy the works of darkness and iniquity at its highest levels, you must cleanse the land, says the Lord. For an army of those under spiritual deviations and delusions of devils have been allowed, capital, to enter your nation, have entered in accordance with the plan to invade from within. Um, am I, who's the, which nation is, it doesn't say nation, so which nation are we talking about? Yeah, the spiritual deviations. To enter your nation. He's talking about the United States. Okay. He's talking about the United States. Okay. Okay. And we'll know who he's talking about in a minute because he says it. But okay. the leadership of Mexico has had their war chest filled by the cartel and the leadership in the United States. And one other that shall be revealed. Money has been paid into his treasury to look the other way. Another Herod, says the Lord. New leadership shall arise in Mexico, says the Lord. New leadership that is not friendly nor cares about what the cartels and other nations have to offer. For that land must be cleansed as devils have been given rain and those in your nation have struck deals in private meetings where even heads of the cartels have been present. In the dark, they all meet together. However, says the Lord, my spotlight, my capital light of holiness and truth shall enter every crevice of that darkness and go forth and expose the bundles hidden in those places. So when it says the new leadership shall arise in Mexico, says the Lord, new leadership that is not friendly, nor mm -hmm. cares what the cartels are. Is, is that, is he saying this is a righteous power that's going to be Hostile it, it, towards cartel, cartel? It seems this that this leader is is not going to be friendly or in with what the cartel is doing, nor wants to partake of it. So, okay. nor wants to partake of any corruptness with the United States and have yeah. them pay their way to have them look the other way either. Yeah. So, sounds like, it sounds like a Trump type character to me. By the way, you described it. It, it could. He's be. not interested in being paid off. Everybody's no. interested in being paid off unless you're of the character of Trump and a few others, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. But, you know, Mexico is getting ripe to be turned over. You know, Good. the cup of iniquity is becoming so full there. It has to be poured out. At some and when point. you say getting ready to be turned over, you mean? I mean leadership. Okay. I mean, um, you know, what the cartels have done who they have been able to buy off to continue doing yeah. what they do. Um, it's getting their whole infrastructure is getting ready to be turned over. So. Good. Good. And says the Lord of hosts, the seducing spirits that have gone out in your nation, Delilah and Absalom working through opposite vessels. They have come into agreement with the same ancient spirits that those in the land of the Amalekites, Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites served. They are attempting to sell those, to sell the people of this nation for political gain and power that they thirst to take hold of. There shall be a flip on the governor of New York, and those that flip to take power, they shall fold, and their plot exposed, and their hunting of political prey tied back to the Department of Justice that has become the Department of Injustice. 
a branch that has been whittled and fashioned into a weapon that hunts. Hunters, capital, says the Lord. Watch closely the hunters in this hour, says the Lord, for a family's house of cards is set for a crash, says the Lord. Is that a, you capitalize the hunters, is that a play on words about hunter or is I think that's one of it. I think that's one of uh, it. It says on that, watch closely the hunters in this hour for a family's house of cards. Well, that that's what it looks like now. Yeah. Hunt, there could be other hunters too, right? Um, that have been uh, very involved in this, uh, you know, elaborately more behind the scenes. Well, but yeah, in other words, like whatever we know Hunter to do and be and have done, he's in league with a whole bunch of other people just like him. He is. So they're all the hunters right now. They are. Yeah. The hunter is. shall become the hunted. Yeah. That so that's all. something that's, yeah. yeah, that's going to echo again in this hour. They It keeps going out and echoing. Do you ever that. ask yourself, I got to just say, uh, do you ever ask yourself, why is God so patient and let this just drag on and on when they're so guilty? What, what do you... <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you, if God was Italian, we would have torched that sucker a long time ago. I mean, this, there, so, that's what I wanted to hear. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> at least oh, felt so good to get that out. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. is, and, the, and you know, be, because he sees things outside of space and time, yeah. that uh, to me is probably one of the main reasons he's so patient, because yeah. he can see if somebody's going to come around. Yeah, he knows. If he gives them time. Sometimes God will allow what he hates to accomplish what he loves. Oh, that's a good, but that's that's a pregnant with meaning, isn't it? That's <laughs> I need to write that one down. God will allow what he hates. To, to accomplish what he loves. Ooh, you need to make a meme of that. Okay. Yeah. We'll make a meme. We'll have yeah. our team make a meme. Good. Okay. Thus says the Lord, those who have committed per, P-U-R, which means to cast lots in Hebrew. That's what per means. Those who have committed per, those who have cast lots and will not bow. That's capitalized. The day of their removal has been set. An appointed time has been set to have their skirts lifted above their heads, their robes lifted above their heads, and their nakedness exposed, their tents, capital, lifted up, every tent peg taken out, overturned, and what has been buried deep in the back of their tents, I am calling it out. My army, says the Lord, has been dispatched to dig it up, pull it out, and lay it bare before the people. Um. I know. Well, yeah. yeah. Some, some tents are getting overturned. As well, well as, it's like God's in a mood here, which is pr pr probably pretty good. He is. He is in a mood. And sometimes I go, Lord, I don't, I don't mind saying this because you're, you're giving this to me. Right. But it's heavy. But then, you know, I get reminded, well, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. And the Lord has gone throughout scripture speaking like this at times when a nation was at stake. So, you well, you know, and that whole thing about he sees the, the end from the beginning. Yeah. He knows tomorrow what's going to happen. It's like he can look at the play, the board as you, as you were, that's our human terms. I don't know if he sees it as a board, but he can, he can look at it and say this time, Next week is when my anger is going to have to burn against, and this yes. is, and he plans out his anger. I think he he doesn't suddenly wake up in a bad mood. This is no. like he he's got it all the whole world in his hand, you know. Amen. Yeah, that's a song. He's got yeah. the whole world, <laughs> the world. in his, his hand. hand. Yep. <laughs> okay. The tent pegs of a media entity are being plucked up, and their tent shall be knocked over by capitals my wind blowing through the voices of the air the prince of the power of the air shall have vocal cords plucked and a media entity will be unable to speak for its voice shall be taken says the lord it shall whoa okay. that's some interesting imagery well yeah and taking down the media that that is their voice you know yep. it gives the enemy one of those some prophetic guy told me years ago that since they're not making any more demons, the demons are in are a finite number, and he keeps locking some up and 
casting some down and chaining some. And, you know, at some point they had to use the media because they're running out of soldiers. Yeah. Basically. And so if God takes down the media, the enemy's literally lost his voice. Like, he, like That's this right. And he doing. understands the power of the voice. Yeah. Satan understands very well. Yeah. The power of, of voice. Yeah. So. And says the spirit of the Lord this day. Be prepared, my capital children, for the unexpected. For the shaking after Passover. For the shaking in the area of Russia. Oh. So just watch. You know, be prepared for the unexpected. Well, that just means, you know what? Just, just expect that unexpected things are going to happen. Okay. Vietnam shall rise up, says the Lord. Just watch. Now, that's interesting. And I'll tell you why. I did not know this till after the word. But um, at the same time of this eclipse that's happening on April 8th, there is a comet that only comes around once every 71 years. And it's called the Devil's Comet. And the last time it came into view was in 1954 oh. 1954 is when they started dividing vietnam up really and they started having issues with vietnam and eisenhower dispatched i believe troops i think it was eisenhower to viet to vietnam so th that's what's interesting and i did not know this so i'm like you know kind of like okay lord don't don't talk to me about vietnam much but you know he said this and i went hmm when I found this out. Well, and is it coming back around? Or will Vietnam see that? Or wherever it was seen, will it be seen again just as as Vietnam rises from the ashes, so to speak? I mean, yeah. they're, they're prospering now. Yeah. Uh, but I have heard that Vietnam is, has some of the richest gold and silver and uh, natural resources than many places on earth they're gonna about to have a gold back currency i've been reading up on that a little bit so and that's that's about now i didn't know what you're saying here but you're just saying vietnam vietnam shall rise well if they're going to have gold back currency we don't even have that right now we're going to have it soon but we don't have it now yeah you know it's interesting too because you may see them rise up in that area of the world um where you know conflicts are happening between nations and get themselves involved in it. So you, that may be another thing to think about also. In a, in a not good way? Um, I don't know if it's in a not good way or, or a way to further protect what they have. Yeah. You know, and make alliances maybe. Okay. So I would just watch. Okay. Okay. And this is all capitals, this next part. It says... A fault line shall be triggered. A fault line. So as he says, a fault line. Now, this is before. By That's when, is, when you wrote this down. This was days before. This was March 30th. Yeah. I released this. Okay. A fault line shall be triggered, period. So that's one, right? And then he says, a fault line shall hit three points in your nation. So meaning the United States. Yeah. This has a dual meaning, my children. Like it's your fault, so a fault line. Oh. This has a dual meaning. Oh. Like if this is your fault that this is happening, that kind yes. of thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. The earth is crying out. The soil of your nation is crying out. The soil of Israel cries out. The blood cries out, and there must be redemption, says the Lord. And the land must be cleansed and rededicated to the Lord your God, Hashem, and the Lord your God Almighty. My son, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the key for the armies that battle ancient demons. So that's interesting. Yeah. Now, Hashem is what what, what the, the Jews call God. His name is Hashem, like Baruch Hashem, praise be to God. So yeah. Hashem is who they know him as. Hashem, Yahweh. Elohim, we know him as Almighty God, right? So, if you take this paragraph that's all capitalized, what's that was a little confusing because sometimes you say your nation and then Israel. So, is this all? Is most of that about Israel? 
Well, the soil of your nation is crying out is us. Okay. And then the soil of Israel cries out, that's Israel. So he's okay. talking to, to the U.S. and Israel that both lands have to be cleansed and rededicated to the Lord. Okay. Because too much has happened. And then it ends with my son, Yeshua. In other words, Jesus Christ yep. is the key for the armies that battle ancient demons. There's plenty of ancient demons in that part of the world, which the war is over. Probably that, I mean, there's ancient demons trying. My son is the key for the armies. I wonder what that, I mean, we would all love the armies to get saved. So I don't yep. really know what that means unless it does mean that. Well, well, you know, it, it, it could mean too that the IDF and, and those types of armies have to understand that they're, they're fighting a force, right? That only bows to the name of Yeshua. I see. That only bows to that, that retreats with that name. So I think that's what he's saying to them. You want to retreat? Well, right. I mean, if they, if they, if the powers that be get a hold of that, that this is only going to, they're only going to be pushed back in the name of Jesus. That's that's like a a new era in world history if they if they use the name of Jesus to push him back. Mm -hmm. Or call on the call on the name of Yeshua yeah. in the middle of a very intense yeah, battle. It's the armies he's telling that. He's we know that as intercessors yeah. and as believers. Yes. But if the armies know that, that's a they, whole other story, right? It is. It's a whole other advantage. Yeah. Gee, that they nice. have. Okay. okay. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, a trumpet shall blow a different sound, says the Lord. There shall be multiple blows of the trumpet, says the Lord. The sound of taps, that's capitalized, says the Lord. And a different sound shall come forth from the trumpet. A new song, less noise and notes that make confusion together and more agreement of the notes to make a sound a sound that will echo across the nation. So this is interesting because when you when you play a trumpet, right, the notes have to be played in a certain order yeah. for it to make a certain sound. If you just start pushing on them, it's going yeah. to sound like noise. It's going to sound like confusion. Well, at first it mentions taps. I was a trumpet player and I played taps at a military funeral even before. Mm -hmm. So it says the sound of taps... There should be multiple blows of a trumpet, the sound of tap. So that's at a funeral or at funerals. That's one of the blows. Yep. And then this is a different sound. So there's yep. uh, from a new song, but it is. It sounds like it's a simple melody instead because it says less noise and notes. Yep. That make confusion together and more agreement of the notes to make a sound, a sound that will echo across the nation. nation. Yeah. Some some melodies are so haunting in a good sort of way. Yes, exactly. You know, hauntingly powerful. And, you know, you need somebody to press those keys or you, to press the buttons on the trumpet correctly Yeah. to make a certain sound. Yeah. Right? So yeah. if the Lord presses on certain areas of our lives, it makes a certain sound. Yeah. You know? So, and, and we are instruments in his hands. So if you think yeah. about it, you know, this could be pointing out too. the Lord is going to start pressing on some different areas of certain individuals' lives. Yeah, very interesting. You know, I'm thinking of, for, this is popping into my head. I'm not saying it's the Lord. It could be. But, I mean, you know, that song of, um, what is it? Da, 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 da. It was like, uh, it was uh, Aliens Landing, but there's that tune. What's that? What was that movie called? Um, oh, I, can't, I can't think of it. This anyway, is Name That Tune with Mr. Steve. Yeah, yeah, it was like, but anyway, it was like everyone was singing the same note and the same da 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 da. It's, yeah. and uh, I can't do it justice because it, it had to do with the spaceship landing. Uh, oh, yes, Close Encounters, thank you. Of oh, the third encounters, kind, is Close that it? Encounters is playing in my head right now, and I'm kind of going, it's like that a sound would emerge that everyone's going, why are we having this note? Why are yeah. we seeing this 
sa same few notes and everyone was gathered. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's at least a metaphor to what uh, something in the natural might even happen. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Let's see here. There shall be a sound across your nation that shall echo in chambers. It shall echo in the chambers of judges. That sound shall cause them to flee from their lusts and their greed. That sound will chase the corruption out into the courtroom, shall chase it into the capital. The sound of my capital judgment going forth, all capitals. For I, the Lord, shall chastise Congress. I shall chastise them, says the Lord. Walk uprightly in all accountability or forfeit your seat, says the Lord. More shall step down from Congress or suddenly leave in this time than any other time thus far, says the Lord. For their delicate dainties of deceit shall be their meal of choice, and therefore they shall haughtily eat that meal. And it shall crush their seats. Just watch, says the Lord. And the same is for the Supreme Court, says the Lord, and the higher courts. You consume the wrong meal in this hour, and you give others a portion of that meal to consume that shall be sickening and stagnating to the body. Your seat shall suffer a break as well, says the Lord. And he goes on. Get in order as a servant, or you wicked servant shall be cast out into darkness, and fools you shall be known as in the book of records for abusing your seats, says the Lord. You know, and I was looking at this, uh, as you read it, it does say more, talking about Congress, which means both House and Senate, when you say the Congress. It can mean both, both houses. It says more shall step down, in other words, resign. Yes. Lead. Uh, then, then suddenly, suddenly leave, like nobody saw this coming. Yeah, or just, yep, just an, an exodus out of Congress. Yeah, yeah, the, then any time thus far, so this would be a historic time. Yes. All of a sudden we wake up and, what's well, happened? Another one, another one. Exactly. And, you know, he's talking about chambers here. So he's talking about, um, you know, there shall be a sound across your nation that shall echo in chambers. Okay. Yeah. Chambers. What's interesting is that there are chambers in in the heart also. Um, and remember, they had said there's a battle for the soul of this nation. Well, yeah, and there's chambers in the judges' chambers. He there's called judges' them chambers, chambers, Congress Con chambers. Chambers. Yeah. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Chambers. All of the above. Thus says the Lord, your nation is at the precipice of a rupture. Says the Lord, of a very large wound that is grown with infection and a breakdown of the covering. This rupture shall cause desperation. Be ready, my children, for the serpent has reared up for a bite. However, it shall bite the wrong arm and shall sabotage its own plan, says the Lord. My children must, that's capital, be in order under my capital covering, raising my capital standard and having my word out as the sword. For part of the church shall placate, says the Lord, and buckle as this occurs. So placate, I had to look this up. I didn't know what placate meant. So to make peace, false peace. A peace. Yeah. Yeah, it means a peace. Okay. For part of the church shall placate, says the Lord, and buckle as this occurs. For the serpent they have spoken with shall constrict and bite them. For they let an enemy in and called it a friend, says the Lord. And a trifecta of ruptures and collapses shall occur. Pray, says the Lord, for the sheep in this that shall be wounded and scattered, says the Lord, that they listen and hearken unto my capital voice to be led to green pastures and still waters with a shepherd of truth, not a showman of deluded words. Gee, so intense, intense Lord's going to scatter some, yeah, he's going to scatter some areas of the church. And that's why he's saying pray for the sheep because they're going to be scattered and wounded by this. And so um, that the, then he, he, he quotes Psalm 23 right here, green pastures and still waters. That's Psalm yeah. 23 he's quoting. Yeah. Okay. Wow. This is the hour of the pressure, says the Lord, that must be applied to bring forth what has been spoken of this day, says the Lord. For as darkness eclipses, there shall be derailments and a garland attempting to make their exit. Now, this is really interesting the way this is said. Before the capsizing occurs, 
Get ready, my capital children. Strengthen yourselves in the word and in me, the Lord your God. When David lost everything, that's capitalized, he strengthened himself in the Lord. And then, only then, did I give him the permission to pursue and recover all. Remember this, this is capitalized, my children, the Davids have not received permission yet to pursue, and yet they have, and therefore they have run headlong into a trap that shall cause many falls. Surrender to me fully and then pursue, and I, the Lord, shall and will give the victory. So Garland could easily be Merrick Garland, the Attorney General. Could It could be a double meaning, right? A Garland attempting to make their exit it could be and and you know the the lord is using the term trifecta and trifecta yeah. is used um when it comes to horse racing as well um and the kentucky derby and what might and that what might that point to like uh, three people or um yeah or trifecta is usually three okay could be in different orders uh, it was a race, three races, trifecta. You know, the trifecta is what is like the three different horse races. Is that? Yeah. 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 Or, or a trifecta, it could be pointing around, around the time of the Triple Crown, one of these things yeah. you're going to see happen. So it just could be something to make a reference point. Well, in other words, if there were three major events, uh, let's say uh, John Paul Jackson used to talk about the perfect storm that would show up. Yeah. A trifecta could be this happened, then this happened. Exactly. Third item. And now you have a trifecta of events, one of which was Merrick Garland, as an example. Exactly. Uh, trying to flee the country and blah, blah, blah. And then. Before. And then <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Complete with sound effects. Complete okay. sound effects. And lights. and. <laughs> okay. We're almost done here. Okay. For it may not look like a victory for a moment. It may look like a defeat. However, victory follows that diversion that shall catch the enemy off guard. Where the many pits he has dug, he and his cohorts shall tip over headlong into. Humble yourselves, O America. Humble yourselves, O leaders. Humble yourselves who hold the trumpets. Humble yourselves, O defenders of the law. Humble yourselves, O rabbis and pastors. Humble yourselves in this hour of passing over by my spirit, and those who do, I shall honor and deliver. Okay. And says the Lord. Now, this part is interesting right here. Because he's addressing the conservative side of things. And says the Lord. The conservative voices... Your conservativeness does not mean you serve me, says the Lord. For many of you are strangers to me, says the Lord, both Jew and Gentile. Your conservativeness does not bring my wisdom. That's capitalized. Seek my capital wisdom in this hour. My capital wisdom, not knowledge, but my capital wisdom. And I, I shall repair what in your flesh you have damaged. This is the hour you come unto me, that's capitalized, or everything you have built shall fracture and split, and the time to heal shall be long. This is your warning. I, your shepherd, am calling out to the lost. Answer the call in all humility, and I shall grow a depth in you that truly convicts instead of just makes noise in an already too crowded room. Thus says the Lord of hosts yeah, in Jesus' name. That's a real... He's really pointed. I mean, conservatives can, we all could do this. We could take comfort in our conservative views and beliefs and practices. Yeah. And that we have God's favor on us. And he's saying, that's not it. It's not, you know, it's a humble spirit, contrite heart and people. I, I can just see this as you're reading it. He's saying, this is your warning. Humble yourselves mm -hmm. before me, which is really means what it says. It means, Lord, we don't have the answers. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have, yeah. you know, I. this is you. You're in charge. You know, so, and when you do that in these crisis times, God, this, this comes rushing in. Amen. To fill that. So, yeah. He does. He does. And that's, and that's where it ends. And, you know, this is his warning, too, to them saying, 
you spend more time honing your conservative ideology and rebuttal than you do getting to know him. Yeah. The Lord that gives wisdom yeah. that will actually provoke to think and convict yeah. rather than just spit out facts. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you want to listen? You've got a couple clips. I see that's in the Should we play a couple of those? If you, if you would like to. I haven't heard them, so. Uh, oh, oh uh, I have to set it up for you, though. Okay, good. So, this was at Praise Church in Louisiana, okay. February 25th. The Spirit of the Lord hit me. I prophesied for 12 minutes straight in flow. Wow. So the Spirit of the Lord hit me, and I just, I was off and running here. So this is and part when of that it. that happens, you don't know what's coming. No. You and I have talked about this for the benefit of the people watching. When it comes out like that, you're, you're about as surprised everybody else when it comes out of your mouth, right? They yes. may think by watching it, they may not be able to tell that you didn't have this memorized or something, but you're saying, no, 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 this was the flow. That's what you meant. And, exactly. And you, usually you're pretty exhausted after that, if I recall. I almost collapsed after this one. Yeah. I was very like, um, your flesh be, your flesh is an enmity with God. So the best yeah. way I can describe it is when that power of God hits and goes through you, your flesh submits. And are all of these clips at that same event? Yes. Okay, so let's go ahead and do them. Do you want to stop in between or do you want to just run them back to back? Whatever you want to do. Uh, let's do the first two back okay. to back and then we'll stop and okay, and then we'll do the others. Okay. Here, here we go. So that about the bitter, the, 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 this seems to refer to a presidential candidate to step in at the last minute. Is that the way you discern that? That, that may be. Um, also, something in there that was said about bringing an outcry against the people of God in this hour, the ancient ones released from the abyss are going to bring an outcry against them, the people of God. Wow. Well, that already started when March 31st, Easter Sunday, oh. Resurrection Sunday was named Transgender Visibility Day. So in the face of God, in the face There's of an God, outcry people. against, exactly. So that's the beginning of that. Wow. Okay. So we're starting to see it. Yep. Really, really good. Well, I'm going to have you pray to close. And, um, and if you're willing to do that, of course. And of then course. Uh, uh, we'll play that. There's a clip after that of the of the parent. I want to see that. So, <laughs> so go ahead and pray for, pray for God's people. Absolutely. Father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before yes, you. Sir. We praise you for this day, Lord. Yes, we sir. praise you for this time together, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you are almighty God. You are high and lifted up far above every power, principality, and might. Lord, we just ask you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse yes, us of Lord. all unrighteousness, Father. Lord, we humble ourselves before you, acknowledging you sent your son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua, to the earth, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and ascended back into heaven and victoriously rules and reigns at your right hand, Lord, forevermore where he is our advocate day and night before your throne. And we honor that Lord before you this day. Father, we just welcome your presence, the presence of Ruach Elohim, the spirit of the living God and the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh to fill where we are, Lord, Father God, to fill these places, Lord, that the power of your presence would saturate the atmosphere. Father God, that those watching would tangibly feel your presence now go forth. Father, we just ask, Lord, that those who are watching and those at Elijah Streams, Father God, and those who diligently work there, Father, that you would equip them with every good and perfect gift that comes from above, Father. But dismantled and their communication lines disrupted so they cannot carry out their plans and it bound up and cast back to the dry places, pits, and areas you have designated, Lord, to be bound there in the name of Jesus Christ and not return or have anything sent in its place, Father. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, that you are our Father, you are our Deliverer, yes, Lord. you are our Healer, you are our Righteousness, you are our Banner, that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord raises a standard against him. And Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you equip us and you strengthen us, Father God, to bear that standard in this hour, Lord. 
that those that are watching, that the enemy has attempted to release a spirit of despair. That's what I'm hearing. That a spirit of despair has been released in order to get your eyes and think your situations and circumstances are hopeless and get your eyes on them instead of get your eyes on the Lord and the solution and the instruction he has for you to carry out because the Lord is breaking bondages in this hour that have gone back generations in your families bondages that have withheld the call on the lives of your children bondages that have kept them from moving and excelling in the gifts that God has put in them. And in this hour of deliverance, the Lord wants you to grab hold of that right now and that promise and speak that out daily in the window we are in right now. This is the hour of deliverance for many. And this is why the enemy has reared up like a serpent and he has reared up to constrict and he has reared up for a bite because the window has opened and the time of your deliverance at hand because the Lord has come for your words. He has heard every single one of your cries and he has come for your words. And it is time for you now to receive it and to get in line with speaking what his word says, not how you feel. The Lord needs to get you out of the cycles of emotion in this hour to focus on speaking what his word says and not how you feel. Mm. And there are those watching right now that have been fighting a very deep depression, a manic depression. A depression that your parents had that is generational and the Lord is touching those neurotransmitters he is mm. resetting your mind he is resetting the foundations of your nervous system he is breaking that generational hold receive it now because some of you are even going to let out a cry and that depression is going to come out right now and you are going to be delivered completely and set free don't mm. look back don't look go back to that place of darkness mm. to the things you did that opened the door for this don't go back to it. The Lord is giving you the opportunity right now for the, the, your day of deliverance has arrived and for you to receive it now in Jesus name. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. There's a couple of you watching. You have had a lot of pain. I think it's gum disease that's in your mouth. Hmm. And it's been very painful and it has actually closed your mouth and prevented you from actually singing the praises of God, speaking his word and using your mouth as the weapon it was meant to be fashioned for almighty God. The Lord is Jehovah Rapha. He is our mm. healer. He is going in at the cellular level and he yeah. is repairing your gums he is also opening the door for you to get to somebody for you to get to a doctor yes, that so. actually knows as well how to holistically and how to tactfully heal these things and he is opening up the door for that but he is touching your gums he is touching the nerves in your gums he is quieting those nerves down he is casting the inflammation out and over the next few days you are going to see drastic improvements in in this condition that has given you so many issues over the years, the Lord is giving you a chance right now for a major change in your life, in mm. your health, in your your in how you feel mentally and how you feel physically. This is that get out of the boat moment for many of you. Don't miss this right now because this is your get out of the boat moment to be touched and to be healed by God. His spirit, his, uh, spirit has been stirred up. The compassion for his people have been stirred up in this hour. Receive it and grab hold of it in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. 
somebody's watching and they have a torn rotator cuff, mm. a bad tear. Mm. And you have, you have been trusting the Lord for the healing of this tear. And you're going to feel your shoulder get very hot probably because the spirit of the Lord is touching it. He's going into the rotator cuff. He is stitching it back together. He is healing it. And it's going to look like it was never, ever torn. You have been crying out because you're in a situation where it is difficult for you to, to get to a doctor. And it's been, it's been difficult for you to, to deal with this. And it has been very painful. And the Lord is stitching it back together. His and your shoulder is being restored in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Amen. Amanda. Okay. Uh, hey, let's see that uh, parrot video real quick here. <laughs> yeah. Do, what, what, do you want to tell us anything about it before we show it? Well, this is Mordecai. Mordecai, Mordecai yeah. is our Quaker parrot that we took in a couple months ago. Very young, only about a year and a half old. And Mordecai is quite the personality on yeah. him. And you will see this in in the clip. Oh man, it's so cute! Now, how how long does it, that parrot live, or how old is it so far? He's a year and a half, and he'll, he'll probably live past twenty years. I mean, Quaker really? parrots can live a while. So, and he's got quite the personality. And this was earlier today, before I came on Elijah streams, that he flew on my head. Literally, he likes it when I sit on the floor, so I sit on the floor with him, and he flew onto my head. <laughs> and so I said, well, let's quickly film for Mr. Steve and Elijah Stream so to show them what goes I mean, on at my house. He has to know he's sitting on your head as opposed to your shoulders. Does he sit on your shoulder sometimes? He does. He actually discovered my shoulder today when okay. I shut the camera off. And, you know, I show these things because Jesus didn't live in a sterile environment. Right. Meaning like he didn't live a sterile life. Right. So I try to make sure to show people what goes on in my life. That's really you know, good. And, and be very, you know, open about, you know, these are the things that happen throughout the day in my life. Yeah. I used to be, my daughter uh, kind of trained me because she raised dogs. We, we sent her to dog training school to learn to train dogs. And so then she was the one that kind of trained me. But, you know, I used to get so grossed out when our dogs would lick me. Uh, Dad, it's just licky it doesn't hurt you you know i would have to go run and wash it but you know i don't do that i don't really let them lick me anyway but if i if they lick my hand or something i'm not going to go run to the sink and wash it like i used to because it's, <laughs> it's a dog you know so that's what they do that's what they do man it's so good to have you on so it's such an important you. revelation today too so i hope everyone Please make sure i think this they will probably send this out within a few days Okay. Uh, in the written form. So make sure you subscribe right there to ElijahList.com. Uh, if you subscribe ahead of time, you'll get that when it comes out in a few days, but you can't ask for it later because they don't have a staff to send individual words out. So, all right. Thanks so much, Amanda. God bless you. So God fun today. You, Mr. So Steve. Have a great day. And uh, we will, let's see, tomorrow is, uh, let me just, David Herzog. So. Oh, hello, Mr. Please. David. Yeah, he's great. <laughs> and he's, he's always amazing. So. All right, we'll all see you all later. See you in the morning at 11. Bye-bye. Shalom.